Excellent. Hello and welcome to Gnomoff's Galaxy. This is the first of uh, four sessions of a uh, reskin uh, of the game No God's Country, uh, which is uh, an ash can uh, of a game in uh, currently in in the works. Uh, um, it's uh, Blades. It's uh, forged in the dark game about uh, humanity resisting uh, an alien invasion. But here, of course, it's uh, a story of of uh, plucky rebels resisting uh, the Empire. Because we reskinned it for Star Wars, um, and this game is part of the May the Fourth. Uh, Star Wars Minicons, uh, Star Wars Saturdays Minicon for the Open Hearth, uh, which is the gaming community that uh, uh, arranges this uh, session. You can find out more uh, about us if you Google it. I think that's the easiest way. Um, yeah. So uh, my name is Andesh. Uh, I use the he and pronouns. I will be the GM or orchestrator, as the, this game uh, terms it, very fancy title. Yeah, yeah. It's not the conductor, so I'm not sure. I, I don't know what an orchestrator is uh, in in <laughs> non gaming situations. Doesn't really matter. Um, I think we'll start by going around the the screen and introducing ourselves. Um, yeah, I will go in the order you're on my screen. That means Sabine goes first. Nice. Um, yeah, hi, my name is Sabine. I use any pronouns. I have played Blades in the Dark before, though not this game. I've played it in the Star Wars, Saturdays, Universe, a bit. I've dabbled, let's say. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I've been on a few of these. Uh, and I'm looking forward to see where we go with this. This looks interesting. Thank you. Uh, Ian is next. Uh, hello. Uh, my name is Ian. I use he, him pronouns. Uh, Longtime Star Wars fan, first time Star Wars gamer. Uh, I have played Blades and Blades adjacent games, including Scum and Villainy, uh, which takes a lot of inspiration from Star Wars, but this is the first time that I'll get to actually use the the TM branded Star Wars terms. <laughs> uh, and I'm excited to do so. Nice, thank you. Uh, and I'm Rich. Hello, I'm Rich, I use the he, him pronouns. I like Star Wars and I'm very excited to play in another Star Wars game that Undish is running because he's amazing. And I love playing with Sabine and I'm excited to play with you guys. It's gonna be great. And in case someone don't know, Rich is the the founder, the creator of Star Wars Saturdays. So uh, uh, it's an honor and a privilege to have you as a as a player here. Thank you. <laughs> uh, and finally, Tad. Hey everyone, I'm Tad. Uh, I also use he him pronouns. Uh, I guess this is both my second Blades in the Dark and second Star Wars game. Somehow. Cool. Thank you. Um, yeah, I have played uh, a lot with Sabine and, and Rich before. I've played some with Tad, but I haven't played with you, Ian. I'm happy to see you here. And I hope we'll all have a great time. Uh, so let's start by going through safety tools. Uh, we will use uh, lines and veils, uh, and I think Rich has kindly provided uh, us with a tab for that because when I was doing everything else with the character keeper, I apparently forgot that part. Uh, we will use the X card. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, I, I, uh, has everyone played with lines and veils before? Yeah, so you're all familiar with that, and I won't go through it in detail. I'll just mention that. If you realize later on that something uh, th there's something you don't want in the game, just feel free, free to, to throw it in there. Don't feel like you have to get everything exactly right uh, right now. We'll go through it at the start of each session before we, uh, we do regular play. 
Uh, we'll be using the X card in case there's something you missed for the lines and veils. And if you want to uh, use it, you can mention it in voice, uh, mention it in chat, though I may not see that immediately. You can throw up an X on the screen. Um, and you don't have to use the X card by name. You can just say, can, can we leave that out? That sort of thing, that's perfectly fine as well. You don't have to explain why uh, the usual there. It's just, uh, I may ask some questions to, to uh, understand fully what it is you want to have excluded, but I won't uh, ask you why you want to, to exclude it. We have the open door policy. Uh, which means that if you need to leave for whatever reason, you can do so. If you want to leave the game completely, that's perfectly fine. Um, if you're if you leave during a session, it's good if you can give us uh, uh, some sense of whether you will be back or not and how long it will take. But you don't have to. If you need to leave, you need to leave. That's uh, that's uh, perfectly fine. Uh, and if you want to leave the game completely, you don't need to explain yourself. You can, there's no hard feelings. Sometimes the game just isn't for you, or something comes up that means you can't uh, participate anymore. That's, uh, that is also perfectly fine. We're also using the Open Hearth Code of Conduct, it's called now, right? Uh, which is the same as the <laughs> new, new Code of Conduct, same as the old Code of Conduct. Uh, it's basically just uh, be a nice person. Don't don't be a jerk. And I don't think anyone here will, will uh, be a jerk. So I'm I'm not worried about that. Cool. Um, so let's take a moment to look at the lines and veils. Um, There are some uh, specific things here. Um, I'll give everyone a couple of minutes to um, fill it out. You can, if you're if you're done, you can throw an OK in the chat. Cool. Seems like everyone is done. We have a line on uh, sexual assault, sexual violence, a line on cannibalism, and a line on uh, interpersonal or domestic violence. Uh, we have veils on consensual sex, death endangerment of children, torture, and parasites. And we have an ask first on midichlorians. I don't think midichlorians will show up, but uh, yeah, that, that's uh, that's good to have in there anyway. Better safe than sorry. <laughs> yeah, very much so. With such controversial content, it's it's best to uh, not take any chances. Um, checking my notes here. Yeah, so I will introduce the. I think I'll start with the setting. Uh, so this is Star Wars. Uh, I'm setting this concurrent with Andor. So it's that same uh, time period. Uh, Palpatine has been um, appointed, or he is the emperor, but the Senate hasn't been dissolved yet. But he's, he's consolidating power. So the empire is starting to uh, become the, it's moving towards the the, the full totalitarian, uh, fascistic, uh, oppressive state that we see in New Hope, but we're not quite there yet. Question: This would be yeah. post post Order sixty six, or um, not quite. Yes. Okay. Cool. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. We're, we're in those last last few years before uh, before uh, a New Hope. So, okay. uh, yeah. Thank you. Um, I have uh, made, made up a planet called Russell 3 uh, in the Russell system. Uh, the main action will take place in Ivis City, which is the main city on the planet. 
this is since all planets in Star Wars are like one thing. This is an industrial planet. Uh, Ivy City has a large shipyard. Uh, there's a space station in orbit above Ivy City. Um, so th there's a lot of lot of factories. There are huge fields of of junk and scrap yards around the city. Uh, there, there's not not everything. Literally everything is covered in junk. There are other places out there as well. But basically, it, it's a factory city surrounded by uh, by uh, junkyards. Is the general vibe. Uh, the empire has taken over. Uh, they they have left like uh, uh, th there's a thin veneer of of uh, the old order left. Uh, the previous mayor of Ios, uh, of Ivy City is still the mayor, uh, but now she's part of the Ivy City Cooperation Council, which is mainly staffed by Imperials. Um, and the the real uh, power in the um, uh, in the system is uh, the governor Arahim Paras, uh, and you can find uh, most of the these uh, imperials on the NPCs tab. Uh, if you scroll down a bit, um, I don't know if, how, how many of these will be relevant. Like the the top leadership. Maybe not, but the ones in Ivy City are are probably more relevant. I, I haven't put it, I haven't filled it out this out with as many NPCs as I sometimes do, uh, but I think we'll we'll probably populate that tab uh, uh, quite a lot in the coming sessions. So the Empire has taken over um, the 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 planet and the system, uh, but they're they're kind of playing playing with the fiction that they're just here to help and and um, that sort of thing. That that's the official line. Everyone knows that they they're they're oppressing the the general population, uh, and you are you will be the resistance in the game. They're called the friction. I guess that's to to uh, give it a a different name. Uh, I think that's the name I've used for the most part in the. Uh, in the character keeper as well, just to uh, to um, it, it's it's a word that's different enough from the resistance that you you will notice it. And since it has some game mechanical effects, uh, I think it's it's useful. So uh, you are um, yeah, you are the friction, the uh, the local resistance. You don't have contact with the with the resistance in general. Um, that's sort of the if you play through the full campaign, which we will not have time to do during these sessions, uh, then the the end goal for for the campaign is to make contact with the the general uh, uh, resistance in in the world at large. But for now, you're an isolated group working under this uh, oppressive. Uh, regime and trying to overthrow it. Um, so, in general, um, th this follows very broadly the same structure as Blades in the Dark, uh, in the sense that there's a downtime phase, and then you pick a mission and you do that mission, and that's when you do the the more standard RPG. Uh, if you're going by trad RPGs, that's when you do the standard action stuff. Uh, and the downtime phase is uh, for downtime activities and uh, like general RP scenes and um, that sort of thing. Here in this game, uh, downtime is a bit more structured specifically with, with relation to how you set up and do uh, and prepare for the mission. Um, so that's the that's the general flow of play. Uh, I think uh, I, it's been. I, I'm going to review the the details again about uh, the the general play once we get into the mission. I will review that again for for the next session. Uh, but there, I think the game is closest to standard blades. Uh, you do you have basically the same uh, actions. 
Uh, equipment works similarly with load, though there, is, there are some uh, minor differences there as well. Um, you, you take harm, you take stress, uh, all of that stuff is pretty much the same. Uh, however, your crew, instead of starting with one character for each player and maybe some, some uh, cohorts, here you start with, uh, there's about 30 characters uh, <laughs> divided into uh, different categories. Uh, so the first category is leadership. Uh, these are the people who don't go on the missions, but instead tell everyone else what to do and uh, provide resources and that sort of thing. Uh, I think for those who have watched Andor, uh, I think Stellan Skarsgård's character is like his, his leadership for the cell that Andor is, is a, for, for the, the group that Andor is a part of. He, he takes on all the leadership roles there, basically. Um, I'll go through the various leadership roles more in, more in detail when, when we get to uh, character creation. Uh, so leadership, they they do their management basically. Uh, they they don't go on missions, but they they set up the the they do a lot of stuff behind the scenes to to make the missions possible. Uh, then you have uh, the specialists. These are the closest thing to standard blades characters. They're highly competent. They have. Uh, cool special abilities, they have uh, access to specialized equipment. Uh, I think on a standard mission, it will send maybe like one, two or three specialists, probably not all of them because you maybe don't want to risk all of them. Uh, maybe someone is injured, you don't want to send them out on a mission because they, they might be more hindrance than, uh, than help. That sort of thing. Uh, there are five different types of specialists, uh, and you'll have one of each type uh, in the crew to begin with. Uh, this can fluctuate uh, later. Finally, you have the cells. Uh, there are four different cells with different uh, specializations. There's acquisitions, assault, recon, and outreach. Um, so they they have uh, different. They they're good at different things, uh, basically. Uh, each cell has six uh, members. N never more than six members. They can be fewer if people die or get captured, and then you can recruit new ones. Uh, but just they, each cell starts with with six characters. Uh, these characters at the beginning, they're called Sparks. A spark can promote to become a firebrand, uh, or, uh, or they can go directly to become a specialist. The firebrand can also uh, promote to a specialist. Uh, so you can increase your number of specialists by, by promoting your Sparks and firebrands, or you can leave them as Sparks and firebrands. Uh, they, they can basically level up. Um, as far uh, they can remain as as uh, sparks or firebrands for as long as you want. Uh, there are probably different reasons for doing one or the other. I don't know. I haven't played the game, so <laughs> we, we'll have to figure that out as we go along. Um, then there are, and these are the main characters. Uh, all these specialists and and cell members, they are fully statted with actions and, and stress and harm and all, all of that. Uh, leadership, since they don't go on missions, they don't have those, the, they don't have stats, but they do have special abilities and they have some resources. Each, each of them has at least one resource that, that they manage. Uh, or they, they have one resource each and then they have some other. Uh, then you have tons and tons of contacts because nearly every character has several contacts. Uh, we will not specify all of those during character creation. Uh, and I, I feel like I'm not sure if, if it works with having this many contacts, but we'll see. 
Um, um, that, that, that's one of the things that's interesting with playing a game that's not quite finished. You, you get to try out some things and see how it works. Uh, so let's see how, how contacts uh, work. Um, we'll specify those as they, uh, as they come up. Um, yeah, that's the general overview of the friction. I have on the first tab, there's a, a very simple like org chart. Uh, this isn't necessarily how the, the group is like formally organized. This is more like to, to give you some sense of the, of the general structure of the, uh, of, of where the characters fit in within like the different roles that stand up. Uh, and we can talk a bit about more of that later. And if you want to have that kind of formal structure, we you, we, we can change things around and, and all of that. This isn't meant to be set in stone. It's more like an aid to to uh, uh, yeah to to get to to grips with how things work. And I should also again note that the the character portraits for for leadership and the specialists. Those are intended to give a sense of the flavor of the character. Uh, they're not uh, intended to remain there later. Cool. Um, so as I said, the uh, mission generation is a bit more structured. Uh, I think we'll, we'll deal with that when we get to it. Uh, I won't go through that in detail now, uh, just be aware that the different leadership roles have specific uh, specific roles, specific, specific things they do during the, the, the mission generation. Um, so depending on what how you divide the leadership roles between you, you will have different uh, responsibilities and, and decisions that you get to make. Uh, um, that of course, this doesn't prevent you from from kibitzing and and talking to each other and uh, and that sort of thing. Um, it's just that uh, the that specific character's responsibility is dealing with certain things. Cool. Uh, now I have talked for nearly half an hour. Are there any questions? <laughs> Uh, it seems like there's a lot to keep track of here, yeah. and so I'm just gonna try to like go with the flow, and uh, uh, yeah, just try to make creative decisions along the way. Yeah, yeah, uh, I think that's the that's uh, that's a good way to do it. Uh, I do not expect anyone to keep up with all the rules. I probably won't. Uh, I suspect I will have to refer to the rule book. Uh, from time to time, and since it is an ash can and the game isn't complete, uh, we'll uh, from time to time we'll just have to make a decision or or make something up to to have it make sense. Can I ask a clarifying question? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So at the time that we begin the game, this organization that we're calling the Friction is already formulated. Yeah. It has already come together. We're not like putting that together ourselves. Got it. No, no, no. The 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 organization exists. You're just you you will create the characters who are part of it. Um so so uh this is like I think you can view it as starting a, a blades game with like a tier three gang, something like that, because you you have a, you have established experienced characters. And then you have uh, who who are have taken more of a backseat role. You have some new characters who have come in, who, who are experienced, who are the go-getters. And then you have some gangs uh, as your cohorts uh, who who will be um, more disposable, I guess. Uh, it feels a bit mean to say that, but yeah. Uh, this game, from the the way I've read it, it is a has is expected to have a higher attrition rate than a standard blades game. Uh, characters on a standard mission, it's fairly likely that if things go wrong, someone will die. Um, you don't have as high of a trauma threshold as uh, in in standard blades. Um, 
I think the sparks, when they take their second trauma, they are out. Other characters are out when they get their third. Uh, so it, it's not super high uh, or, or super low, but, but it is lower than for Um Yeah. If there are no other questions, uh, I think we should get into character creation. Um, I think we should start with maybe dividing the leadership roles um, between uh, players, between you. Um, oh, one thing I will note that's also different from Standard Blades, uh, or a couple of things, you don't have the, the faction game here. You don't have different factions that you have relationships with and that sort of thing. At least not in this this Ashcan. That's not that's not part of the game. Uh, but the GM has a more structured uh, play uh, where the the um, the Empire has resources that they spend on gaining advances and that sort of thing. Uh, so there is kind of an, um, uh, a mirror situation from from you you will advance the, the friction, but the uh, the your opposition will also advance and gain you special ability. Cool. So for the leadership roles, I will introduce them and then uh, we can talk about who wants to do what. Uh, so the mastermind is the one who is making the, the big strategic decisions uh, for the most part. Um, it's the mastermind who decides which missions we, we, you will do. Uh, and also if you will, after you've done a, uh, after you've done a mission, you can, the, the, Friction can go dark or go standby, like basically laying low for a while. That's the master, primarily the mastermind's decision. Um, so the mastermind is strategic leadership. Uh, then you have planning, and planning is kind of the XO to the mastermind. Uh, they're the one who do the nitty gritty planning. Uh, planning will uh, roll up the missions, uh, planning decides who goes on the mission once master, the mastermind has decided which mission to do, um, and that sort of thing. I think I have, no, I have not made the detail notes here, but I found that, yeah. Um, planning also, asks the gather information questions based on uh, when it's time to, to go on the mission. Uh, intelligence handles intelligence. Uh, they have uh, some special actions they can do with the network, which is uh, um, basically an abstraction of your, of your support network, the people who are not directly engaged in the in the friction, but who are sympathizers who, who will help you uh, even if they, they're not taking part in the, the actual fight. Um, then we have the fixer. Uh, the fixer provides uh, resources for the mission. Like, yeah, you need heavy weapons for this mission. The fixer fix will, will arrange that. You need vehicles, the fixer will arrange that. The fixer also handles your attached assets, which is basically support characters. They, they're kind of like experts uh, in uh, standard blades. They, they're the cohorts who have some special thing that they're good at, uh, but they're not fully statted out as, as characters. Um, and finally, there's pirate media. Uh, who uh, does outreach and will spin things after after the, the mission, uh, like put out, it, it's your propaganda arm, uh, if you want to call it that. Um, yeah. From what I understand, just from reading the rules, the fixer and pirate media are the ones who have the least to do 
Uh, so I would suggest that the same player take both of those, but uh, I'm not sure if that's the, the best way to do it. Uh, that's just how it, how it seemed to me. Uh, they have the fewest decisions and uh, yeah, uh, that sort of thing. Any questions about those? Uh, so is there anyone who have some, have a, 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 is there anyone who has a strong preference uh, for one or the other of uh, the leadership roles? I'll do what you just suggested. I'll take the fixer and the media. Cool. If that's all right with everyone. Yeah, go ahead. I think I might take the intelligence if that's okay with everyone, but I can also do the planner. Go ahead. So, Pad and Rich, who wants to be the mastermind? Who wants to be planning? Well, I, I will say that if... I, I mean, it'll probably happen regardless who takes the mastermind, but I will have Del the Funky Homo Sapien playing in my head the song, the mastermind, every time we mention the mastermind. I don't think that affects my choice. I just <laughs> want to share that. Thanks for letting us know. It's no problem. I, I just want you to know that if there's ever a delay in response because someone said mastermind, it's because certain lines of that song Mm -hmm. playing in my mm -hmm. head um, since i've got a theme song i guess i'll just go with the mastermind if that's okay with you dan sure, sure. okay cool. i will take the planning so uh feel free to find uh different uh pictures uh give them a name um i just realized i haven't made room for their pronouns you can add that uh, to the name if you want to. Um, Would anyone be bothered if I used a pic of Lance Reddick who recently passed away? That's why I'm checking in to make sure that's cool with everybody. Anybody have a problem with that? Okay. Just something about a mastermind as played by Lance Reddick that seems kind of cool to me. That seems perfect. Yeah. Uh, I don't know who he is. Uh, he's, you, you know his voice. He's been in a bajillion oh, yeah, days. Yeah, yeah, it's him. yeah, yeah, yeah. He was I'm in a, Fringe, that's how I mostly know him, that in the wire. Go ahead, sorry. I'm a regular player of Destiny 2. Where he oh, plays yes. The, but so like, some, oh, yeah. He plays the commander, so it makes sense to me to have the the um, him as the mastermind. Did Did you know that the Titans are just slamming uh, the Guardian games right now? And I'm one of them. <laughs> okay, and my son is too. He was saying that uh, it's a lot of them are doing it as an homage to Reddick, which I think is pretty lovely. Um, each of you get to pick an advance, so you get to pick one of the special abilities. Uh, I'll mention some of them that are uh, common or, or recurring between you. Uh, one of the advances you can take is to increase the tier of the friction. Tier works very similar to standard blades, so it's basically the general quality of your equipment. Here it's not some, here it won't affect the size of your gangs so or that sort of thing, because you don't have gangs in the same way, uh, but it will affect how, well, your, your, your baseline uh, power level, uh, I guess you could call it. Uh, the mastermind can choose to increase a victory. Uh, victory is the thing that will, if you fill out the victory track, that means you, you've won. Uh, you, you've successfully contacted the, the resistance in, in, out in the world in general. Since I don't think that's going to happen here anyway, I don't think that's, that's probably not the, the most useful advance in, uh, in this situation. Um, uh, Anders, can you, can you maybe link your uh, amazing, what's the word? Let me look it up. Oh, Pinterest, Pinterest board. Pinterest. Yes, yeah, please. Yeah, uh, because yeah. I want to look for a picture before I give this person a name or a Oh, board. I can please. I can pull over the uh uh the like names and species cheat sheet, which has oh, it I, there. I've got, if that helps. I've got that 
I've got that open. Already. Oh, it, it should but be mine, right there on the left hand side. Mine, unless mine you have an older one. I have an older one. Oh, okay. I have an older one. I bet I just opened it. Stay with the times, Sabine. Come on. I did. Yeah, I, I will. I will. I promise. I will. I will it's update my space. Um, it's all good. Me. Uh, yeah, you're the master. Uh, you're the mastermind. I will provide the intel. Good, appreciate it. Mm -hmm. uh, I I thrown a, a link to my my Star Wars character Pinterest board. It has of thousand pictures by now. I think over it's a bazillion. Bazillion yeah. is the right word. We were we were agog over it yesterday. It's it's an amazing amazing thing. Um. Oh, I, I'll mention that the uh, leadership characters, the way they advance is by filling up their resource track. So it's time for the mastermind, intel for intelligence, morale for planning, and so on. Um, so that's how you advance. I'm not sure if if we someone will get the chance to to advance during this uh, this fairly short run, but uh, we'll see. That, I guess that's part of of uh, it's one of the things we can uh, we can find out I've chose, chosen Droid to be our intelligence specialist because I feel that is something a Droid is very well um, equipped to do. Good. I've also chosen to do the calf and spy advance because it gives me more friction actions. And I think there might be, that might be funny. Mm -hmm. Also, I can multitask because I have a far more advanced brain than people. So, but I'm not bragging about this, of course. You're just stating objective facts. Yes, indeed, indeed. These moves refer to things that I don't understand. So I feel like yeah, I'm yeah, randomly yeah. choosing. Yeah, 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 and and if you if you realize during play that oh this was absolutely not what I wanted, you could absolutely change them. It's not. Uh, I don't want you to feel locked into because you you picked something that turned out to be something. Cool. I think all of you have. Uh, a move that allows you to trade one resource for another resource, basically spending your own resource to give one of the other leaders a resource. 
the one for mastermind is more flexible. You can give out any resource, but it will add pressure. Pressure is uh, similar to heat from from standard blade. Thank you. It, uh, uh, so pressure is heat, and then oppression is the equivalent of wanted level or the, the closest equivalent. All right, I was sort of zoned in on that for a for a moment. Um, so I've given my my two members of the leadership pictures and given them names and so on. And now I'm moving on to a specialist, or is there something else that I need to fill out about them? Um, no, I think you've got everything uh, that we need. Um, if everyone. Everyone has picked a, a special ability, so I think we can move on to the specialists. Um, so I'll go through this quick. This quickly, I think these are more obvious. Uh, like the face is a face character. Uh, Kit Bash is kind of a combination techie driver pilot for 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 Star Wars, of course. Uh, Slice job is uh, is a hacker. Uh, or slicer in Star Wars parlance. Um, Slick is kind of an infiltrator, um, the the classic spy character, I would say. Uh, and the trigger is uh, is uh, a person who does a lot of violence. Uh, yeah. So you should pick one each to be. Probably, this is probably the closest you'll have to uh, a main character um, that you will play during mission. But this character, all of these characters won't go on all missions, uh, so you should be aware of that. Uh, the one who's left over, uh, if you since you you pick you, you'll have one each. The one who's left over is one that anyone can jump in and play when when they're their character isn't on a mission if they're not like focused on on playing characters from the cell uh, that that's on the mission. Um, but uh, yeah, I think uh, Tad and Rich should get to pick first here since they were uh, last for the uh, leadership. So, do you have any strong preferences? Go ahead, Tad. Which one appeals to you most? Hmm. You know what? I'm going to go with Faith. Oh, uh, Tad is the Faith. So, Rich, what do you want? All right. Oh, man. I'm torn between Kit Bash and Trigger. Oh, they're both so interesting. I haven't even looked at what the slice job advances are, but I bet they're amazing too. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. All right, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna take trigger. Cool, which is going with trigger. Uh, Sabine. Uh, at least the kit bash for me, I think. Cool. So Ian, slick or a slice job? Yeah, I'm doing slick. Cool. So we leave the slice job open. Um, mm -hmm. if we have time for it, we'll we'll start them out. 
if not, we'll leave that for when they when it's time for them to go on a mission. Uh, so here you will also pick one special ability uh, and you will get some additional action dots, I believe. So I will have to look that up. Oh, I, I should note that each of you, each of the playbooks has a special action. Um, it's called a specialty. So the face has smooth, kit bash has kit, and so on. Uh, this is both uh, an action rating and a resource. Uh, so you can use the, the, the text that is directly under there uh, is. How, what happens when you use this uh, special resource, but you can also roll it. And this is one of the things that I think is a bit unclear. I've had some communication with the designers about this uh, because these action ratings tend to overlap a bit with the uh, standard action ratings, like smooth will overlap with consort and sway, but that's just how it is. Uh, you, you can roll either of them. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, but I need to find out if it's an extra. Uh, did you say how many action points, dots, thingies we get and I missed it or? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Oh, okay. Right now. Okay. <laughs> okay. So. All right, well, Anish is looking at this. I'm gonna ask everybody else to look at two pictures and tell me which one you like better for uh, the trigger. All right, this is option one, a badass looking Rodian, or option two, a badass looking cyborg guy. Thoughts? I'm, I'm definitely leaning in favor of the Rodian, I think. You know, my only my only issue with Andor is that there weren't more like alien guys in there. I agree. I would have liked more alien guys too. Sabine, what what are your thoughts? Yeah, I think uh, alien guys are fine. I'm looking at humans, so uh, I'm not going to be an alien. So having a Rodian, uh, Rodian hitman is uh, kind of a nice idea. Yeah, I'm so pro Rodian. Cool. Thank you all.
I don't think, oh, yeah, I don't think you have any additional action though. Um, They're just already pre-assigned. That's kind of cool. It makes sense because everything else has been pretty quick. Yeah, uh, I'm honestly not sure, but I think that's how it's uh, supposed to be. That's not one of the questions I've I had an answer. Cool. Just, just so that I'm clear, this might have already been said, but we get four additional dots to assign and nothing can go above two. Is that right? That's the way that it is in Blades anyway. I don't think we get any more to assign. Yeah. Oh, okay. For anybody. Okay, got it. Uh, I think that's how it's supposed to work, uh, but I am honestly not sure. Um I can't find anything. I, I haven't been able to find anything in the rules unless I missed it. Uh, and it's not among the questions I have uh, received an answer to. But I will, we should take a break soon anyway. So I will see if I can uh, find out. Oh, I, I should mention, since this plays into this a little bit, uh, experience works differently. Here you get an advance for surviving a mission. Going on a mission and surviving means you you, uh, you gain an advance. An advance is either increasing an actual rating or get, getting a special ability. So uh, it's a bit easier. And I think those who survive will advance a bit faster uh, than in standard blades. Uh, but on the other hand, I think missions here are uh, a bit more dangerous. If it's if it's the case that we are not going to uh, assign any action ratings, I might switch to the slice job if that's all right with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. Uh, let me let me find out. Um, I think we we should take a break. Um, we'll take uh, ten. I don't know. It's fine. Yeah. Uh, so the cells, um, you can uh, name the cell. Uh, I think that makes them more interesting than being like the acquisitions cell. Uh, so give them a, a cool name, whatever you like. Um, and I think you should uh, create, like I, I, I'm assuming the character on the far left on each in each cell is the leader. You should create that character 
uh, or you can create that character at least. Um, and but here you have some restrictions on how you assign your action dots. And I don't think that these characters will be definitely be less competent, but I need to check for sparks. Yeah. So I will but they but they, they should all have names and abilities. Uh, you don't know don't name them now. Don't don't do that. <laughs> I, I think because uh the way I I think this will go is that you'll go on a mission it will be some of the specialists and one of the cells. Um, and the people who don't have a specialist on the mission should play one or a couple of the of the cell members. So I think it's better if they get to uh, create them. If that makes sense. Here, I put in the chat how you assign the action dots for the uh, sparks and here I don't think you get anything extra. Oops, that did not work out the way I wanted it to. So you get one dot in either survey or rig. You get one in either prowl or clash, and one in either consort or smash. Plus one special ability. Consort or what was the other one? Or you you uh, put it smash. in there, right? Weird. Okay, cool. And this is also in the uh, I, I put it in the chat. So oh okay. So the way advancement work, uh, a spark, if they survive a mission, they uh, become a firebrand. Um, or they can become a firebrand. Uh, or if you spend the resource that when, when, a, when a spark or a firebrand advances, if the leadership role that matches the, the specialist spends one of the resources, then they can instead promote to that type of specialist. So uh, the uh, the fixer can turn someone into a kit bash, uh, for example. If I remember correctly how, how the resource went. And the advances you see that are grayed out, those are the firebrand special abilities. So you don't have access to those from the beginning. Also, firebrands have a, the grit specialty. You don't have access to that either as a, as a spark. Forgive me for I'm probably going to make you repeat yourself here. That's fine. Uh, what 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 is it? What are the re, what are the restrictions on what members of the outreach cell can take as far as their action ratings? It's the same as for everyone else. I put it in the chat, but I, I'll Plus, repeat it. Survey or rig, prowl or clash, and sort or smash. Yeah. Okay. And only assign dots to like the the leadership character in, uh, or, or the the leader of the cell at this point. Uh, you should also pick a. I don't remember if I mentioned that, but you should pick a special ability for the uh, cell and one special ability for the character. Oh, reader.
So what now? Is everybody down uh, there? You can name the cell. Uh, oh, the, the, name it. Yeah, uh, space. Uh, the top row. I don't know if I've spelt the name of the city properly, but uh... Uh, you have. Okay, sweet. He's a great man. To beam, I think Lux has one dot to many. It should only have three. Uh, I've chosen members of the cell game plus one dot and hunt. Oh, oh cool, cool. So, no, I have. I, I'm scary. I mean, Excellent. I'm, I'm, good at, Excellent. I'm good at leaning on people if they will move away from me, myself. Like Very that. cool. So is everyone feeling like they're done with the cell stuff or does anyone need more time? Uh, yeah, I'm I mean, as long, as long as we're just making the leaders, then yeah, I'm done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool, everyone ready? Good. Um, so I think we'll do some character intros uh, take another break, and then we'll get into mission generation, and we'll see how how that works out. Um, so let's start with we, we'll start from the top. Uh, we'll do leadership. I'll go left to right uh, in the character keeper. So we start with the mastermind, Redick. Redick. Oh, I'm getting an echo from somebody else. 
Um, Reddick, I believe, was he fought in the Clone Wars. Um, he fought on the side of the Techno Union. And so he was part of the Separatists. Uh, but he saw which way the wind was blowing and didn't fight to the end. Uh, he pulled a fade. He was in a commander, a commanding position, but realized that with the politics of the situation, there was no easy exit. So he grabbed his cohorts that he could get to walk, and they did, and set out the rest of the Clone Wars. He came back home, which is here, uh, our setting, Rasu. And then when the Empire started to move in, he saw what was coming and started building the friction. Uh, it's, it's to him, he's very, um, he is not quite, oh, geez. What is Forrest Whitaker's character? I feel so terrible. Forrest Whitaker's. Uh, Saw Guerrera? Character. Yeah, he's not yeah. Saw Guerrera. He is, he is not that vicious, but it is all about getting the Empire off of Rasu. If, not that we're going to get to this point, but if it was the Imperials are leaving here but going to another planet, he'd do that. People go off this planet? Okay, they're, they're resources, but he doesn't care about them anymore. Yeah. So he's local. He's been, he was away, fought in the war, came back, and now he's he's applying his his uh, experience and, and knowledge to, uh, to fighting the empire. Yep. Cool. So next we have uh, Sabine. Yeah, I am my character, the intelligence person, is Dr. One and T, but you can just call him Dr. Int if you wish or whatever else you wish. Uh, but he they they will listen to Dr. Int or DR1 and T. It's not that long and even uh biological species should be able to say these few uh phonemes. Uh well DR1 and T is droid. They were uh, working for the separatists with uh, mission control and anal analysis. Um, when the war ended and most of the droids were decommissioned, they saw that coming and decided to fade away, maybe uh, searched out uh, their old war uh, buddy, I guess, Reddick, and uh, attached themselves to him maybe unbidden, maybe not. Uh, by now, they are um, coordinating the intelligence efforts of this friction, which um, they feel obligated to do because the Empire is even harder on droids than the Republic was. So, yeah, no, no, mm -mm. no. I mean, no, just no. They don't, they don't like biologicals telling them what to do much and they feel that the empire would be even worse in that respect than others cool so you have a, a connection there you you work together a bit in the war uh, so you have some some real uh, yeah, if, if that's cool with you rich okay. i love it thank you cool um moving on then to planning Pat. yeah Egghart, he's Kamasi. Uh, those are those, you know, fuzzy, peaceful aliens. We would do anything to them, you know. And yeah, he used to be big. Uh, you know, he used to be, he used to serve Republic as a bureaucrat. He was somewhere in old Republic apparatus, pretty high uh, up. Uh, then, obviously, Empire took over. The, one of the first bad things they did was that they kind of, you know, bombed his homeworld into 
Oblivion and yeah, now he's not really all that peaceful. Also, some little bit of drinking problem, <laughs> as you can see from the picture. Uh, yeah, yeah. Drinking while working. Uh, <laughs> so how did he end up on, on Rosu? Uh, well, he was probably on the run at some point, you know, after uh, all that shit gone down. And that was just a place where he decided to lay low. Uh, and then met very unlikely allies, Reddick and uh, DR Int. Uh, or some, I'm not sure. I, I forgot the pronunciation already, sorry. Uh, 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 yeah, even through they've just a decade, a decade and a half ago, they have been on separate sides of the, uh, you know, war with separatists. They started this organization together or something. Yeah. Cool. Uh, yeah. So, uh, Ian, introduce us to our fixer and pirate media. You're muted. Uh, yeah, sure. So, I've got the fixer here, uh, the Anzelin. Uh, Bababalu or Baby Blue. Um, and Zelens have always been sort of like, like underfoot, you know, in their little like warrens and, and, and dens and, you know, just sort of fixing things up. Um, and similar to what Sabine was saying about uh, the, the Empire cracking down on various things, one thing that they have made very clear through the, the Cooperation Council here on Ivis. Uh, here in Ivis is um, uh, an emphasis on everything being standardized and proprietary. And so things like the right to repair have been severely curtailed, uh, which has driven, I think, pretty much like all the Enzelans, at least in Ivis City, out of a job. Um, and so Bababalu doesn't have any like particular anti-imperial sentiment, like ideologically speaking, but just out of like necessity has has thrown in with the friction uh baby blue has uh the ability the barter system so i can trade supply for intel one for one Ooh. look very much looking forward to uh role playing as babu frick <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, and Selens are one of the, the best additions from from the sequel films. Uh, I'll give them that. They, they, that that was a, a cool thing. Uh, okay, so uh, pirate media, Kendra Horn. Uh, yeah, should I also describe Kendra? Yeah. Uh, okay, Kendra Horn, uh, played here by Phoebe Bridgers, the the singer songwriter Phoebe Bridgers, is half a coordinator of a network of pirate radio stations um, and half a sort of so like Woody Guthrie style uh, singer songwriter in her own right. Um, she has the ability uh, heart wrencher. Uh, when I release a memorial, I can pick one additional benefit. And I think that this comes in the way of her composing songs uh, about the sort of heroic um efforts of the of the friction um similar to like you know songs like john like john brown's body or something and has composed a lot of songs that have become sort of like underground anthems uh she's a true believer uh she, you know she she was born and raised in iowa city and um never really got to like have a life before the the empire kind of rolled in um but you know feels feels very strongly that like this is her home and wants for people to uh be able to do what they want to with their lives and i don't think that she's necessarily a, a, inherently a violent person but that's what the circumstances call for 
cool. This is a very interesting mix of, of pragmatists and, and idealists and people who live here and just want the empire out and people who, who are like more uh, inherently opposed to the, to the empire. Okay, that, that's interesting. Um, so let's move on to the specialists. Uh, so first we have our face, Tad, introduce us to oh. uh, Jen Sully. Yeah, Jen Sully Shenak. She's a, well, she's also not local because she came here with her father who, you know, kind of happens to be a chief of imperial security in this city. And, well, she's gone through the teenage rebellion of like just protesting and it kind of grew from there to kind of living a double life and then joining the friction uh, as an operative where she uses her you know her name and her contacts and her pedigree to to help help people um yeah i think that's that's basically what yeah and she has uh, she has the contacts in the highest strata of the society in the imperial leadership. Mm -hmm. So what has she done to make the others in the friction trust her, to, to let oh. her inside? Well, How did she a... prove herself? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's a good question. Hmm. Did she like help someone in the leadership escape from detention, or did she help them uh, pull a, a difficult mission, or or uh, what? Yeah, kind yeah, of... yeah. I think she, uh, yeah, I think she was uh, when she first tried to join, she was rejected, and uh, just to spy them all, she. Uh, she stole. Uh, she stole some important uh, imperial uh, intel and information, and just delivered it. Like uh, now, nah. now we're talking, guys. Are we? Cool. So this was something big enough that yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, they they felt that they, this is more than than someone would do to to infiltrate. This is. This is yeah. something really actionable. Yeah, it was what would be like the very important thing that they would not give up to to just infiltrate. Uh, 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 does someone have a have an idea? Uh, perhaps the codes for infiltrating a base that was then bombed. And a Ooh. lot of deaths happened, so you know, yeah, she could screw us over, but yeah. we have the dirt on her. Yeah, yeah, that works. Also, I think mm -hmm. that's you know the the aspect of like you know if they really wanted to infiltrate us, why would they send her? Like, <laughs> there was actually a guy, a FBI agent, who infiltrated like uh, some you know African American gang. Just by being white, basically. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. our actual story. A guy was like, someone asked him, like, how do we know you're a cop? Like, cops actually sent a white guy to infiltrate his gang? No. Obviously. That's impressive. Ooh. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, you, let's you don't, you don't have to hand it to the FBI. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's move on to our kit bash, Sabine. Yeah, that's Yael Moes. Uh, Yael, um, I think she came from a place similar than this, and all she wanted to get was out. And so she signed up to be a, a yeah, basically a stormtrooper. She wanted to be a TIE fighter pilot, right? She really wanted that, but uh, the the problem is that she likes un 
orthodox solutions to technical problems and the empire frowns on that and so they made it pretty clear that someone like her would never fly a tie fighter in their whole life and so she said fuck it stole a tie fighter and uh yeah well ended up on a place that was pretty similar to the place where she started from and uh yeah well i mean she can't go home because why would she and uh, she doesn't like the empire because they're all idiots and also they're all bad idiots like they're racist and they're hidebound and they're cruel and you know she doesn't like them and uh, also she stole a tie fighter so i mean she she has taken it apart to uh kit up some speaker speeder bikes now but uh you know Parts of that are still lying around, pretty sure. Cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, let's hear about our slice job from Ian. You are, yeah. I'm, I'm very interested in uh, the idea of droids becoming people over time. That's definitely one of the things that worked best for me about the Mandalorian was IG-11 becoming like an individual as opposed to just some something that was built for a purpose. And so I think uh, E3H0 or Echo um, what is is part of the retinue that uh, that Redick brought with him. She was originally a, a, a separatist. Like a like a very highly specialized separatist like infiltration droid, um, and since the collapse of like the you know since since the end of the Clone Wars, uh, she has been kind of negotiating with. She she was she was made for military service, uh, and and was kind of born into that. You know that's the first thing that she knew, and so she's been kind of wrestling with like, uh. Like, what does it mean for your purpose to end? And and how do you adopt a new one? Um, and so when Reddick was like, hey, I, you know, I've got this sort of new thing that I'm working on. She uh, she jumped at the chance. Um, she is uh, not particularly refined, especially in terms of social graces. Um, but she's faster than anyone at hacking and, uh, you know, knows how to use a gun. Yeah, that will, uh, uh, that and the willingness to fight the Empire can get you quite far. <laughs> yeah, sorry, slicing, not hacking. Yeah, 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 of course. Uh, finally, our trigger, Rich. Okay, just just doing one last check-in. Um, death endangerment of children is a veil. Is it okay if there's death and endangerment of children in a backstory? Yeah, that's already happened. Oh, oh, right. Yeah. Uh, so here's my headspace for uh, our wonderful trigger, Krisk Zanagy. Uh, Krisk wa was, uh, yeah, he, he started off as a pirate a member of the Unta Gunta crew. Uh, but it turned out he had a good aim and realized he could make more credits as an assassin. He joined the Assassin's Guild and uh, was tutored by someone, became a very effective. Yes, this is totally John Wick. Just, just get over it. Get over yourselves. I own it. Uh, but anyway, he's an assassin. He joined the Assassin's Guild. Uh, his mentor raised him until one day uh, his his mentor was sent after him on a job, and he had to kill his own father figure. Uh, so he said, uh, "Kark, this this is stupid. I'm gonna go live a regular life." He went to Rasu. He uh, found a foul mouth Rodian girl and fell in love with her. They had some kids. The Empire showed up. She mouthed off to a stormtrooper who was hurting their kid. They killed all of them except for him. Now he's got nothing else to live for except killing stormtroopers. That's it. He's just one bundle of rage. And the only reason he hasn't gone out on a suicide mission is that if he's alive, he can kill more stormtroopers. 
yeah, not very complicated, but not everyone needs to be complicated. It's almost a 10 page backstory, but <laughs> not quite. You could draw it out to 10 pages. I could draw that out to 10 pages if somebody, you know, paid me or something or I had free time. <laughs> uh, Cool. Uh, let's do an uh, introduction of the cells and their leaders. I think we should keep this fairly brief. We're close to the hour. Um, but yeah, uh, we'll go through them. Uh, so we'll start with acquisitions. That's Tad. Oh, I'm, start oh, I'm starting again. Yeah, acquisition. They're calling themselves uh, spaceport kids because they mostly operate in spaceport, but they are not, mo most of them are not kids. That's just, you know, naming. It's like one of those names that someone came up with, and we are still, we still, we are still trying to find out who did it. Uh, yeah, they're pretty well equipped. Uh, and the leader is Cobb Avrak, who is local Etorian merchant on the spa in the spaceport. Uh, not very action focused guy, but you know he can get a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. Cool. So next up is the assault squad or the yep. assault cell. Yep, that's me. Um, that's Lux and the Scavengers, um, led by Elkan Lux. Elkan Lux is a De De Veronian, and they're all ex-cons from all over the kind of place, and at least Lux is pretty pissed off at the Empire for, I mean, he was an Imperial ex-con, need I say more. He didn't, wasn't maybe not particularly wholesome individual before that but he's a lot less uh, wholesome now and his gang are just as kind of bad right they're scavengers they're hanging around on the edges of the of the city and the scrapyards and uh, just going about scaring people basically and uh, if they find someone to attack that's fine and if not well they just drink and and play the jargon or whatever oh thank you uh, so outreach, Ian. Sure. So uh, in preparation for Jedi Survivor, uh, I went back and played Jedi Far Fallen Order, and I was really taken by the environment at the beginning of that game, which is the kind of like uh, ship breaking planet. Um, so I've created the Ivis Shipbreakers Union, uh, led by Noct Kron, uh, the Trandoshan. Uh, I think that specifically this cell is the organizers of the Shipbreakers Union. It's not necessarily all of the card-carrying members. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, shipbreaking, extremely hazardous, uh, dangerous job. Um, imp you know, important for the people who do it. And, you know, I, I don't know that it's necessarily shipbreaking specifically, but it's any kind of, like... Uh, perilous industrial work that is happening here on on rasu um important that people be able to have some uh you know collective bargaining power and so um not only is this like uh you know the workers organizing themselves it is also a vector for spreading uh word of the, the friction um and uh also like a recruitment uh mm -hmm. zone for friction agents Cool. Thank you. So finally, Recon, Rich. Recon calls themselves Sticky Fingers. Uh, they have a very upbeat outlook. They're, they're very jokey. Uh, they do not have the hard edge of most of the other cells, it sounds like. Uh, mostly because of the personality of their leader, Auden Nez. Uh, who is an alien, uh, is considered a slave race, but stays out of enough notice from the Empire to be able to do the work. Uh, and they also have like a point system, and they're constantly talking about the game. Like, yes, this is all a sell for a thing, but they're like giving each other points for particular things and a certain amount of panache. 
And in there also are posthumous points, PPs, stuff like that. Cool. Excellent. I love this, this resistance or this friction. Um, let's take a five minute break. So we'll come back at seven past roughly. <laughs> yeah. So now we'll go through uh, mission generation. And this is a thing. Um, I have, there's a tab called game flow. Uh, that's not the best name for it, but that's what it's called now. Uh, and on the left there is like the, the main um, game loop. Um, so I'll go through that briefly. Uh, you have the friction phase, which is basically the downtime phase. Uh, generally here, characters heal and work on long-term projects. But from what I understand, uh, you don't have a downtime, any downtime actions by default. Uh, to heal, you either have to miss a mission or uh, you can do it if um, you go if the whole friction goes on standby or or uh, goes dark, that gives extra actions because that that's like spending time laying low. People get to heal. Um, but uh, the part that's called the briefing that's when we generate missions. So that's what we will do now. Uh, so the first thing that happens here is that planning generates three missions, and we do that on the missions tab. And I just realized that now we need a dice roller, and we have one because yep. Rich has prepared us. Excellent. Uh, now I just need to disconnect the VPN because that always messes up. Probably want me to roll any dice, but I want to see what, what you roll. So um, generating missions. Uh, for each mission, uh, you first pick uh, what type of mission uh, you want it to be. Uh, and then planning rolls three dice. The first one will be the detail, which is kind of what, what kind of, more, more specifically, what type of mission it is. Uh, the second is what reward you get if you successfully perform the mission. And the third is the penalty if you fail to perform the mission uh, or fail to complete the mission. Uh, different missions have different uh, requirements for, for uh, specialists. Uh, and a certain cell gives a bonus to, to different types of missions. Um, you will generate three missions. One of them we will play out like a standard blades job. Uh, one of them will be resolved through just through an engagement role. Uh, there are specific rules for that. I think all of those are on. Um, I think the rules for that maybe not. Not the resolution, but but the dice you get for the engagement role. You make an engagement role for for the job you you do. Uh, a standard, a standard job, and for the secondary job, I am making a mess of it. Um, and the third job you will automatically fail. Uh, so it, um, yeah, you will generate three missions. The primary job is the one you do as a standard base job. The secondary job is resolved through uh, in the background, the right? Role. And the third is an automatic failure. Um, and as you can, oh, sorry, this could be bad. Um, I have, be, because it's a bit unclear uh, what is what on the on the tables, all the things that are red are bad for you. Uh, either you are losing resources or the your the empire is gaining their resources because there's a lot of resources here. It's hard to keep track of which ones are good and which ones are bad. That's why I try to color code them. Um, you probably want to create a mix of missions uh, since 
you get a bonus for sending the correct cell on the correct mission, and you're going to perform at least two missions. Um, yeah, that's about it. Um, Just it, to be clear, you roll a d6 on these missions. So you choose yeah, yeah, the yeah. hard knock, for example, roll d6, and if you're lucky, you roll two, maybe. And, uh, and... You, ro you roll three three dice for each mission. So you, you generate the detail, um, the reward, and the penalty separate. Oh, okay, okay. But you could uh, have a good result on the penalty and not uh, get yeah. hit by it. Oh, cool. Yeah. I like that. Thank you. So, some of the missions are just, oh, we, we can ignore this. That, that, that's fine. Uh, and gaining time on a, on a, as, as a, <laughs> if the penalty is that you gain time, that's basically, oh, we, we don't do anything about this. And that means we're not stirring up trouble. So we, they, they are not, the, the empire isn't accelerating their hunt for you or, or their timetable for, for the things that they are doing. Uh, so that's how, how that works. Um, so th this is when you can uh, talk amongst yourselves what kind of missions you're you're interested in. Uh, planning is the one who rolls the dice, but that that doesn't mean that planning should have to decide for for themselves uh, exactly uh, which types of of missions to make. One other question: Can we yeah. choose one mission type twice? Sorry. Can we choose one of the mission types twice? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you can okay, make, so we can you, we can do three hard knocks and just yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Okay, cool. It's I just like that it. it makes things more difficult because they they will require the same types of characters, and the characters who go on the primary mission can't go on the secondary mission. So, um, yeah. Do you, is there anyone who has a, a strong preference? Like, I really want to do this type of mission. I want that one uh, on the table. I guess I don't know about preference, but I just want to be able to. I just want to like lay out what I've picked as far as special abilities because I feel like that has a bearing here. My. Um, Outreach cell has the has the ability, uh, what's it called? Uh, has the ability friendly faces, which says that the cell counts as a face specialist for mission requirements. Um, so having the hearts and minds missions playing out in the background as something that we're not like devoting any specialists to, uh, is an is an option because they they count as a face. For the purposes of, of that. Cool. Hmm. So that means having one hearts and minds mission sounds um, sure. reasonable. And and you, I think, uh, I don't think this is specified, but uh, at least the, the way I see it, it's perfectly fine if you decide, roll up one mission and then decide to, oh, this is the one we'll, we'll or actually, now let, let's keep it simple. Let, let's pick the types of mission first. Yeah. First yeah. to 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 yeah. reduce the number of decision points. Yeah. I mean, um, fun thing is that since we don't have uh, any firebrand yet, it means that if we want to do hard knock missions, we have to send the trigger there. In all other missions, we have like several options, but on hard knocks, we have only one option for to send there. Mm. It on the other hand, directly the requires uh, to send their yeah. trigger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On the other hand, all the characters are available right now. So, yeah. I think we should choose three different missions and just figure out which one we don't want to do, right? Yeah. Because that might be easier. Yeah. Cool. So, well, first, let's, I guess we have four tables. So, let's decide which table we won't be rolling on. Yeah, yeah. that's what I just said. I think it Sorry. makes sense. Based on what you said, Tad, to do the other three besides okay, yeah, hard yeah. knock, okay, es so especially because it make I like you know e even in something like Andor, like it makes sense to kind of work up to a hard knock mission, right? You're like laying the groundwork and preparing for yeah. 
an open assault or, or I'm not sure. I mean, we have a trigger available now. Maybe we won't have the trigger available at a later mission. Mm, and then that's we a good can, point. Then we can choose hard knock. And now we I can. Mean, so. Then we can maybe have a firebrand at that point. Oh, it's true. And also, I think we have some some someone who chose the cell that chose to be able to replace the trigger, didn't we? Don't we? Yeah. No, it's a kit bash that you can replace. Yeah. Yeah, we can replace kit bash and uh, face, I think. Yeah. I know that the uh, the main reward you get from hard knock missions is morale. Oh, okay. Um, which mm. is whose resource is that? That's planning's resource. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I track planning. Uh, I don't know if that matters. Uh, I think we should do a resupply uh, because we need, I think, uh, we, I would like to have assets, more assets. Assets are good, right? Yeah, yeah that sounds good sure. to me. Okay. Cool. So and hearts and minds doing... would, will also definitely... give us stuff that we that we want, right? Recruits yeah, yeah. and contacts. Yeah, yeah. So we guess a resupply and hearts and minds are, are what people want. Mm -hmm. So we can either skip hard or soft knocks. Mm -hmm. Were you saying something, Rich? You were muted. Oh, I, I'm sorry. I said, sure. <laughs> cool. Uh, so definitely resupply, definitely hearts and minds. Um, yeah. Wait, Ooh. on the other hand, trigger is not required on any, well, requ requires does, doesn't mean that trigger can't go on missions. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, in that case, let's do soft knocks and we will do hard. We will see if we can, and let's leave hard knocks to the next, next time. So okay. I'm rolling on soft knocks. Cool. So roll way. three dice and we'll just assign them in, in the order. There you go. Wait, it didn't. <clears throat> oh. Oh, no matter. Okay. 3d6. So we have 2, 6, and 4. We have a soft knock that's a root recon. Uh, or was it 6, 4? So a 6 is plus 2 intel. intel. And the penalty is. Oh, you're you're doing it. Okay, thanks. Yeah, plus one pressure, plus one high. Okay. Next, we go to um. Uh, what is under there? One question. Uh, yes. where do we get the plus one time from? Oh, sorry. I was. I mean, I, I like it. I I would love it to have that, but I think a four is just plus one treasure. Yeah. Yeah, treasure, not would... treasure. Treasure, I would like treasure. Ah, uh, Sabine, you didn't have to say anything. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. I was just confused. I, I apologize. I won't. The next time I won't. Uh, okay, so resupply is 115. Round. Is... Then. Uh... Plus one asset, plus one supply. Minus two morale if you don't do it. Uh. And the last one. Six for one. So it will be rescue. A rescue. And we stand to gain a contact. Or plus one contact. Oh, you're, you're faster. Minus one morale. Plus one. 
cool. So uh, we've done the rolling, uh, and now the mastermind determines mission priority. So the mastermind uh, decides which mission will we play through in detail, which one will we resolve with. Um, yeah, you know, I, I've, I've said this like four times now. So. It's okay. It's okay. This is helpful for me. So I appreciate you going slow. Uh, I, I, Rich, am interested in the the route recon, uh, just because, like we talked about, starting off hard, right? We've got four sessions. We can start soft and then go hard next session or next mission after that. So starting with a route recon is interesting to me. Does anyone have any things, like, do you want to argue differently? like other ideas other thoughts i'm open to listen okay um i would like to point out that as the as the as <laughs> baby blue the Enzelin can turn supply into intel so if our if our issue is that we don't have enough intel i we can get that either from like primarily from Intel or I can turn, I can make Intel out of supply. That's true. Okay. So then if we do resupply, then we could take that supply and turn it into one Intel. If we, uh, I don't know, do we need supply? <laughs> so bad at this. Uh, I don't know. That's fine. There, there, it, there's a lot. <laughs> what do we need? Anything? Or do we start at a detriment with anything? I think you're starting with zero in all resources, but I should actually check that. It's possible that you start with, I feel like you should start with something. I need to check. But uh, to go through briefly, what the, the resources that are relevant to you, to this mission. Uh, Intel is what you use for basically gathering information be before the mission. Uh, I think that's the, the primary use. Uh, the more Intel you have, uh, the more questions you get to ask and the more, uh, more questions you have access to. Uh, so with, with a zero Intel, you, the, you have access to fewer questions. The more intel you get, the more questions. Uh, and I, but before the planning asks the questions, I can gather intel with my, or uh, whatever name is here, with my intelligence person, and I can get a lot of intel. Cool. Good at that. Okay. Yeah, so, so maybe intel isn't a, a critical uh, resource at this point. Supply allows you to have uh, specialized equipment for a mission like giving like vehicles, giving everyone uh, military grade weapons instead of whatever they have scrounged up uh, for themselves, uh, explosives, that sort of thing. Interesting, uh, that sounds good. And contacts are contacts. You have, you start out with a fair number of contacts. Uh, so yeah. Um, and then you can lose morale. Uh, morale is the resource that uh, planning uses. I think it's primarily to level up. I'm not sure if they spend morale. I don't know about any other thing to do with morale than level up, but there could be something that I, I just missed. Yeah. Yep, but you don't want to I don't think you want morale to get too low either, but I'm not sure. I think um based off of what we've talked through, the resupply mission is where we're gonna go. We've got flexibility with the reward. Uh and the penalty sounds terrifying. So that sounds fun to me. Cool. So the resupply mission, the scrounge, that's your primary mission. 
Um, so you get to pick one as secondary. That's where you'll send uh, some of the specialists and, and one of the cells who aren't going on the primary mission, and we'll just resolve that with the dice. Uh, and you have to send things. Yeah, depending on which one it is, you have to send someone. Uh, someone will have to go on. All right. Uh, so I've, our primary is the resupply. We're just going to send some folks for a quick resolution. Let's do our hearts and minds uh, for the quick resolution there. Uh, do I select a cell then or? Uh, no, no, you don't get to do that. <laughs> oh, OK. <laughs> Sorry, th this is uh, this is part of the of the structure. The mastermind, uh, you uh, determine mission priority. Uh, and now the next step is that you direct planning to gather intelligence. Um, and I'm about to go mobile, just as a heads up. I got to step away. Uh, I'll be cool. mobile for the next little bit. Cool. Um, so uh, planning, you get to, uh, now you get to do your gather information. Uh, and since your current intel um. level is zero, I think it is zero. Um, Wouldn't it be more helpful to do the gather from phase of intelligence first before planning gets to uh, gather information questions to do them? Uh, maybe, but this is how, uh, how the game okay. is set up. Okay. I think you, you get to do these for the primary mission. Uh, that's okay. the, uh, because that's the one we're, we're going to play out in detail. I think ah, it's assumed okay. that you do this for, for the secondary mission as okay. well, but that's just, okay. uh, I think that's part of the, when we get to the engagement. And I'm starting to think it, that you should start out with one of each resource, just because otherwise the first mission is kind of, uh, there's a lot that doesn't, Get into it. I mean, there are still questions I can ask. Oh, yeah. Get their right. information. I think but thinking I, of, some, of some of the other. Um, but I, I have a, I actually have a move that says uh, planning gets plus one and gather information, information question on any list, regardless of intel level. And I wonder why, how is that useful if the gather information? question asking thing comes before I do the thing, you know? I mean, I'm, I'm fine if we played like that, but uh, I'm just surprised. Hi, Rich. There you are again. Yeah, double Rich. Uh, yeah, I think that yeah, you, you activate that and that question comes later, I just assume. Um, I don't okay. know how, how much this has been play tested before, so. Uh, but I, I'll make a note of it, and we'll see if uh, uh, if we get some feedback on that. Uh, which one? Um, sorry, which was the slicer operation, right? Cool. Uh, well, I think I think you should start out with one in your primary resource. I'm going to just add that just to make make sure that everyone has an interesting choice to make uh, for the first mission. Okay. So. Planning, you get to ask the question. Um, so you get to ask one question from each of the two lists that are currently highlighted. So Tad, one, one question from the, <laughs> the list under Intel 0 and one from the one under Intel 1. OK. Uh, uh, oh, sorry, missions. 
And I think we should, before we do that, we should decide on some of the, this is a scrounge mission. I think you're going out into the, uh, um, into the scrap fields around the city. Um, you have a lead on, on, a, on a place where there are some, um, where they have uh, dumped some of the some old machinery from from a machine from from a factory that's being retooled to produce imperial goods instead of what they were producing before. Uh, so, and and you figure that that that's a good place to to pick up some some stuff that could be useful for you. Yeah, I'm just kind of confused of what my move that I've chosen for. My for my uh, planning to actually does. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. You can ask intelligence to spend one intel, uh, so that you get to add the additional question. So so that you get okay. to ask what empire advances and the empire advances are the ones uh, that I yeah. have not picked yet. Uh, they should have, I think they start out with one advance in each category. So I should have picked those. Ah. This one. Hmm. So. We're not spending one intel at this point, are we? Uh, sure, what are we keeping it for? I mean, spend it. We need... That is a good question to ask, I think. Okay. I, I don't plan to sit on the intel because I think it's there to be used. Okay. So... Hmm. Let's ask what gear would give us the edge from zero or more. Cool. Um, sorry, I, I, I'm stuck here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, what gear would give you the edge? I think, uh, I think you need vehicles to transport uh, or uh, because they, they, there's a lot of stuff there. Uh, but some of it is heavy machinery. You'll need some vehicles to to get the most useful thing. Makes sense. Then from one plus. What kind of security does the empire have here? I think it's fairly light. Um, they have some. Um, hmm. This isn't. A, it, it's not a high security area or anything. Um, but they know that this is equipment that could be useful. Uh, so there's a few guards. They probably have. Um, like a land speeder with uh, with uh, an armed land speeder, but they don't have like any heavy vehicles. Uh, it's a small group of guards, maybe uh, like five or ten guards, uh, and these aren't stormtroopers. These are like just regular uh, security guards. Yeah, and then I guess we we are doing my move and spending one intel. Yeah, uh, let's see what empire advances are in play here. I need to look at the advance I have. Okay, yeah, uh, they do have. Uh, you have seen uh, on the streets as well that their security teams have combat droids. Uh, so in addition to these guards, there will be like probably one or two combat droids. Yeah. 
So I think this is all from my role and we should pass back to someone else. Yeah. Um, now uh, we yeah. have done the intelligence questions. Um, now intelligence uh, does the network uh, actions. Yeah, which will actually, okay. So I can do two action network actions each friction phase we are in one friction phase and since i just uh you know what uh, since i just uh, spend a point of intel i will post a bounty uh and on use for information so that i get more intel because i mean we, we kind of i think we kind of need that mm -hmm. and i will check this and then we get, get another one and um mm -hmm. okay i could Supply cache. Oh, I like a uh, supply cache. On the next primary mission, the team will find a stash containing useful items worth three to free load. That seems useful, right? Uh, that means that you can, um, uh, yeah, you can have extra equipment without spending load. So you could go with a light load and still have some more stuff. That sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because they're going to a kind of a scavenging zone anyway. So I think it makes sense that I could say, hey, um, also uh, you realize that there is uh, the there is a cache of, um, I there is a cache of an older uh, mining operation that uh, a ship that should ha still have resources available just to get this a little fictional position. Sure. Yeah. Sure. And I'm choosing this, and I will highlight these two so we don't forget until next week that I've chosen them. Excellent. We should have some sort of checkbox or something. Or Sorry, I just found a spider. Sabine, is, Sabine just turned it bright yellow, that's all. Yeah. 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 Cool. Uh, so we've tasked the network. Now we move on to the fixer. Uh, ah, yes. <laughs> this so is, you uh, assign oh. material and attached asset, and you don't start with any asset. Um, so, but you can, uh, yeah. And this is acquiring assets. That doesn't get you assets. That gets you material. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. I'll I'll go ahead and spend my my point of supply here. Uh, mm -hmm. And so that I can roll, because you know we had, we determined that we would benefit from vehicles here, right? Yeah. Okay. Sure. Yeah. So I will I will uncheck my box of supply, mm -hmm. and I will roll one six sided die. Yeah. Here we go. Let's see. Uh, acquire asset. That's Good. six. Nice. Awesome. So this is um, this is Baby Blue the Anzellan, uh, you know, it's coming out, you know, coming out from on one of those like uh, uh, what's the word, a tray? No, like um, you know, coming out from underneath the guts of like a, a, a kind of like the the big cargo trolley that was in episode six of Andor that all of the the payroll was loaded onto, um, that he has you know that he's sort of uh stripped out the insides and has made it so that instead of um you know there's as much carrying capacity inside as possible um and also they look nondescript that's where mm -hmm. the i think i think the fine is coming from is that they can carry a lot and they don't look suspicious nice so that's uh like a crawler right yeah i think that's i think that's right Cool. Some something that can navigate the the scrap fields, yeah, yeah. Uh, e easily, yeah. Cool. So that was a it's a good 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 use of that point, I think. Very um, very useful. I'll and I'll then... also I'll also highlight this so that we know that that's what uh that's what we got for next week. Cool. And then is there anything else that I need to do here? It looks like. I have a thing for when we get when we get a contact, but we haven't gotten a contact yet. Yeah. 
when you get a contact, you can convert that uh, into an attached asset. Okay. Uh, but you don't have any right now. Okay. Yeah. Then this is then this is a uh, uh, Bababalu like basically like welding on just kind of junk onto the outside of these crawlers so that they look like even more uh, <laughs> like nondescript. <laughs> um, and, and under the hood, they're actually like quite, you know, quite robust, but, uh, from the outside, they look like just regular scroungers stuff. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Excellent. Um, cool. And finally, I think, yeah, the mastermind makes the engagement role for the primary mission, which means we need to count up some dice. Uh, actually, sorry, I had missed one step there uh, because we should have the point where planning assigns who goes on the mission. Yeah, I was just thinking, I was just looking at that, to be honest. And it was like, should I have done that? Is this coming up? No, I, I, I had just missed adding it yeah, on yeah. the list. I, I'm yeah. not sure where it goes, but we'll we'll do it now. Yeah. So, and you will assign people to both of the missions you're you're doing. Yeah. So on our primary mission, oh, wait, wait, wait. So they get. Uh, guess I should just go with the cells that get the plus one on this shit. Probably. So for. Uh, the resupply you want acquisition. Oh, those are my guys. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to assign my guys. Okay. That's easy. And for the uh, hearts and minds, uh, that's uh, outreach. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. And uh, the for hearts and minds, the out, sorry, there was one, one of, no, one, one of the cells could count as a hit bash, was that right? Yeah. Uh, one of the, one, one of my cell can count as a, as a face. Oh, cool, cool. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, yours can count as a face, and the spaceport kids can count as a hit bash. Yeah. You have, uh, you have both of those. Um really need anything else. Um they have the uh, because they, they have to send a face firebrand or slice job, but the uh outreach uh, cell counts as a face. So they they're set. Um so the question is only who else should go on the uh, scrounge mission to resupply. And presumably everyone wants to have a character to play because it would be boring otherwise. Uh, that doesn't have to mean that you, you're sending all special, like the uh, specialists. It can be that someone's playing uh, one or more characters from the cell, that sort of thing. But, but this is something you should talk about who, who you want to yeah. see in play. And presumably most of you want to see your specialist in play, but that's uh, that's up to you. I wouldn't mind driving those fancy trucks. That sounds cool. With my, with my uh, whatever her name is, Bailey, really? something like that. I need to learn my name. Yale, Yale. Yale right? Yeah. Yale. yeah. I think cool. I'm fine sitting this one out with my specialist. She doesn't seem to have that much to bring in here and get my uh, cell leader or something on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Um... I could see someone mentioning this to Chris. We're talking about the scrounge mission, correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The resupply. He would say, wait. Like planetary security? 
beneath my pay grade. <laughs> it's, it's not killing stormtroopers. He doesn't care. <laughs> well, they are still Imperials. So. Yeah, they're like baby Imperials. But there, uh, but there may be some stormtroopers. You, you never know. Yeah, fuck up the cark up the mission, and then I'll come save your. <laughs> when you're, you know, when you've grinded out the levels in Dragon Quest, you don't go around killing slimes, right? Like whatever Star Wars uh, equivalent of that analogy uh-huh. is what Chris would say. Yeah, uh, I'm I'm down for doing a member of, of whatever cells out there. That sounds fine. I could just play a. What are they called in um, the Legacy PBTA Legacy games? The the little scrubby guys that you you play that aren't your mains. Oh yeah 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 the uh, you know what I'm talking about side characters. There's something else. Yeah. Eagles. I'll, I'll I'll play a a supporting. The secondary character. No. Well, so are we uh, sending any specialist in it? Is yeah we got our um. Yeah, I'll go. Our, our, I'll, our driver. Our driver Echo will sure. go. Oh, yeah. yeah, you go. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Quicks. Quick characters. That's what they're called. Quick characters. Knew they oh, had a okay. term. So it sounds oh. like it's uh, Yale and Echo who are the mm-hmm. specialists on the mission. Yeah. Um, the people who are good at rigging and slicing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we are very good at that. <laughs> we are less... You, you are good at clashing. That's fine. None of us is good at smashing, but the smash guy is not coming, so I guess. If you guys want me to to step in, no, Chris, fine. I will. It's but fine. he really wouldn't be motivated. It's for this. fine. We're we're gonna be fine, Echo and uh, Yale, and with the uh, other with the other guys, the shipyard. Five or whatever they're called. Yeah, uh, oh, kids. Not the spaceport. Is it the? Yeah, it's the spaceport kids, right? Oh, spaceport kids. Awesome. So I'll be playing a member of the spaceport kids, right? Yes. Nice. You can create your own member of the spaceport kids, I guess. Yeah, I, I would recommend. Cool. So now we get to the engagement role, and we're coming up on time. So let's. But uh, well, well, we should. Uh, is there it, anyone who has to rush away right away when we when no. when we end? No. 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 Cool. So uh, I I won't stress through it, but but uh, we'll try to. Uh, okay. So the, the by, by the way, is there any point of sending specialists on secondary missions? Uh, no, only not. if. It's a requirement, or maybe you get some extra dice for it. I haven't, I don't remember the, the dice. Okay, the sure, but, sure, but sure. If, if, we, if we notice that there's some reason to do it, then we, we can go back and change. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. That... Cool. Uh, I don't see anything go, so. Yeah. So for all missions, uh, you get one die if all members of the team have worked together before. You haven't done that since this is the first mission. Um, intelligence can spend intel for advanced information. That will give you plus one die. Does intelligence want to do that? That's for you, Sabine. I think we have zero intel. Um. I have one intel. Oh, you you gained it. Sorry, yeah. I gained. So. I gained one intel. You can have it. Sure, go ahead. So that's Take one die. Uh, uh-huh. One die. If all members of the team are specialists or firebrands, they are not. Um, and then there's here. I have made a guess because the the rules say that you get an extra die if morale is particularly high, and you get minus one die if morale is particularly low. I have just assumed that that's like on the, yeah, on, on the high and low ends. So since your morale is one, you will lose a die. Um, minus one die if you lack needed specialist yeah. or material, you do not. You can get zero. Uh, and then it's a supply mission. Yeah. 
plus one die if the fixer provided vehicles for rapid exfiltration. You have vehicles. Uh, so that's uh -huh. plus one die. Minus one die if pressure is four plus. It is not. So you're rolling one die, seems like. I suppose so. My 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 uh, fine vehicles don't play into this at all, do they? Uh, no, that would that they will come into play. They'll be coming handy later. The mission. Yeah, okay. But the fact that you have vehicles uh, at all gives you a die. So, uh, mastermind, the mastermind rolls one die. That's you, Rich. Ha ha ha! One die. Got the whole world in your any, hands right now. Any die I want? Can I roll a D one hundred? Uh, no. It's D6. <laughs> I mean, you can roll a D four if you want to, but I mean, uh, the it's success is on six, so D hundred doesn't actually help anything. <laughs> oh my uh, gosh! I that's rolled a, a one. one. Yes, so, sir. I think this means that you will start out in a desperate position. I'm pretty sure. XP. Oh wait. That's not, not, true. In, not in this game. It's just bad. That seems about right <laughs> for this. <laughs> oh boy. Cool. Um, uh, just one question: Where where did all the minuses come from? Because we had at least two pluses here um, from the one you intel. Got, um, you got a minus one for morale being low. Oh, okay. Um, and we got a minus. We didn't. We got a minus one for not all being specialists of five brands. I guess. Yep. You, oh, you did. You didn't get that. Plus. Oh, okay. Oh, you okay. got a plus one for for spending mm. intelligence. You got a okay. plus one for the vehicles and a minus one for morale. So okay. Where one. do we track our morale? Just uh, that's on on uh, tabs uh, leadership. That's oh, okay. that's me. Oh, okay. So wait, if we were at plus one, should I have rolled two d six? If you were, uh, sorry, what? I, well, I thought we. I don't know. Ah, there it is. Okay. Okay. It, the, ah, this, I see. Uh, morale modifier is line forty eight, mm. forty nine. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so that's one reason to to want a lot of morale, apparently. Mm, okay. Okay. And, and, and I know, I'm blind. I'm apparently blind, but I don't see a morale tracker anywhere. Uh, it's, it's on my sheet. It's on your sheet. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. our plannings. Oh, okay. Like Intel yeah, is on yours. Yeah, morale no, on now mine. I see it. Okay, now I see it. Why, why isn't our morale higher than I'm wondering? Huh? Uh, because well, we started I... with one and did not get any opportunity to get it any higher. Huh? Yeah, I think I, I just assumed or I thought it was more interesting to start with one with all resources than to start with zero. Uh, because I haven't found in the rules that it says that you're starting with more. So yeah, I guess you're starting out in a bad spot. Uh, I will ask about this. As well. Cool. Um, we're coming up on time. We've done the engagement role. So let's do some stars and wishes. Um, I'll do reverse order on the screen because we did the other order when we introduced. Uh, let's start with uh, wishes and we'll do stars afterwards. So, uh, Rich, let's hear your wishes. Uh, wish is like, I want more fluency with this. This is, I feel like I'm back to like starting off with blades. I'm really confused, but not frustrated, which is nice. Um, that leads to a star. I want to see boots hit the ground. And um, while I don't have much skin in the game, I want to see this mission that's going foobar. And uh, I'm happy to, I think I want to, I want one of our more minor characters to bite it or get in a lot of trouble. Yep. A lot of wishes. Sorry. 
I don't know. That's fine. Um, cool. Uh, Ian. Uh, yeah, I, I have the sense that we're, you know, building the, as Rich said, the fluency with this sort of game. Um, you know, there's this and there, I guess there's no God's country and maybe that at some point in the future, there will be other games based on this. And so I hope my wish is that in the future, in this game and beyond, we play more of this in order to be able to make use of of the skills that we're building right now. Like, I, I hope that we don't learn how to play this game and then never play this game again. <laughs> yeah. Um, that sounds, uh, sounds good to me. <laughs> cool. Uh, Sabine, wish us. I'll echo the whole, yeah, I wish uh, I, we, we had been more fluent in this game. Um, but I think that will rectify itself. So I think uh, we'll all gain a little more, I guess. Um, we're, we'll be able to a little bit more, well, I can't English today. We will acquire a certain expertise with this game come the next few sessions. So the other wish is, I want to see more of these characters we've just created because we did a lot of mechanics and there was rather little interaction between the characters, which I think is kind of a pity because they're also interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, Tad. Yeah, yeah. Uh, same. I. Well, I wish we continue like gaining proficiency with this game. Uh, I mean, I think that I understand it much better than I understood it like, you know, three hours ago. Uh, yes. So I think I I personally feel like I made at least a bit of progress here. Uh, yeah. Uh, and yeah, I would also get, want to get some more interactions. Like maybe some leadership interactions, because I'm not really sure where you are supposed to role play the leadership from what I've read this game. Like I understand when you do specialists and uh, the cell members, but where does uh, leadership like exist like in in game? I'm not really sure, but I, I would like to explore that. Yeah, that rolls into one of my wishes actually, with, which is also that too, because we, we were kind of pressed for time here, but yeah. in the in the future sessions, I want to make room for for having some role play moments, even like during this mission generation step, yeah, like yeah. we can do some of the stuff in character yeah. and and have some uh, some space uh, for that uh, because like all, all the or not all the blades games, but standard blades lends itself to being very focused on the mechanics if you don't make room for for yeah. character interaction uh, so i definitely want, want us to to do that um, i'm making a note so i don't forget um, yeah uh, and i uh, uh, agree with ian i think this is a very interesting uh, set up for for a blades type game um, with the the like the multi tier character structure. This is something I wish I wish we'd had for for the Stars in the Dark run of of Blades uh, because we when when we hit tier three we could have really used this like the 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 leadership and the and the yeah I agree go getters and and that sort. Of Sorry, uh, Rich. I was just agreeing with you. Sorry. Yeah. No, no, no. That's fine. Cool. Uh, so uh, I'll go first with stars then, since I went last with wishes. Uh, I'll just say that I love these characters. I think you've done a great job of, of creating an interesting cast, and I can't wait to, to see them more in play. And then I will pass on to Tad for more stars, if you have any. Uh, stars, uh, 
yeah, I guess the characters are the only thing that you, I can star. Yeah, yeah, I like the the concepts. They are, you know, it creates like interesting, uh, I guess, opposites between characters or like uh, contrasts. That the word I was, yeah. So I'm looking forward to see them interact. Even though I I get that like some people don't get to everybody doesn't get to get like meaningful interactions with everyone with this with this cast and time uh, and time I think, but let's see what happens. Cool, thank you, uh, Sabine. Let me start. Yeah, stars to all the characters we created. That was a lot of fun just to see these people emerge from the numbers. Um, I also like the troops I play. I know from us, Marika, where you actually have also three tiers of characters who mash together for missions. So this this is uh yeah, this is kind of familiar. So um yeah, and and uh, but that means that you want to have a little down play, a downtime play where the characters can actually interact and uh, snark at each other or uh, really regale a tale of their t days in the Imperial Navy that never happened or did, who knows. Yeah. So, and I also, I, it, I find it's a little bit of a pity that we don't see the leadership guys uh, get out into the field if everything is lost. Right, that 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 kind of I understand why, but still. Yeah, thank you. Uh Ian, any stars? You're muted. I have three stars. Uh one is for you, Anders, for taking on the the uh <laughs> thankless task of uh holding all of this in your brain and teaching it to us. Um I uh I just ran my first session as a as a facilitator with the open hearth on Tuesday and that was with a game that I was very familiar with uh and so I can imagine the extra that you must be under you know if you're if you're using an ashcan game uh second star is uh I think mostly for Mostly for the No God's Country part of this, which is that while playing it, I immediately was like, oh, this is like playing XCOM. I get it. Uh, and I really like that part of it. I really love those games. Um, so I'm excited to see. Um, you know, I can't just reset the game when one of my favorite little guys gets shot by an alien. So uh, excited to have to live with the the results of my actions and uh my last star is uh as a player uh nice to see you again tad and sabine and uh nice to meet you for the first time rich and anders oh thank you uh rich huge star huge star for the character keeper this is dope you did a really really good job with this i love the like use of color to differentiate between different crews, the the fact that you can kind of see where they might go after being a spark and that's tantalizing and exciting. Uh, I really like the choice to have like pre-fill archetypal characters of like, oh, I just look and that's a character from Leverage. I know what this character keeper or what this character type is. Good job. That's that's really that's clever design work. And I was I was just blown away by this keeper. It's it's so good. It's so so good. You had to have spent some time and it shows. I really like it. Thank you. Um other stars, I am excited to see a mission. I want it to go bad and I want it to go well. I I want to see I want to see where this goes. I'm excited by it. This is this is a neat game. I would not have looked at this game and thought Star Wars. So thank God that we're doing this cuz I wouldn't have thought of it. It's awesome. Thank you. Um yeah, the, the XCOM connection is definitely there. The, the main inspiration they cite in the game is the TV series Colony, 
Mm -hmm. uh, which I watched on Netflix, and I think it was it, it's pretty good. Uh, it's <laughs> the the way I I would characterize it is V like the the old TV show V for grown ups. Uh, because it, it's it's less lizards eating hamsters and more uh, living under an oppressive uh, regime that yeah that sort of thing. Uh, but but it, it's it's good. Um, yeah, I won't drag this out any longer. We're past time. Um, is everyone okay with the sharing the the video? You stop it. Stop the recording. Yeah, yeah.